Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 14th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's that time of the month again, and we got Microsoft's Patch Tuesday to talk about a total of 93 different vulnerabilities were addressed in this version of Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. Bulk of the vulnerabilities as usual in Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge and associated uh, software like the scripting engines. What's probably the most interesting two flaws in this particular release is CVE 2019-1181 and 11 82. These are two more vulnerabilities in RDP, the remote desktop service, and these two vulnerabilities lead to remote code execution pre-authentication. So essentially the same thing we had going with Blue Keep. Now, and while the Blue Keep vulnerability only affected older versions of Windows, these vulnerabilities do affect Windows 7 all the way through to the latest version of Windows 10. But well, after the Blue Keep exercise a couple of months ago, I'm sure you have a perfectly accurate list of RDP servers in your environment and you will prioritize patching them. And with Patch Tuesday, of course, we also got patches from Adobe. This time, Adobe patched eight different products, most of them being part of the Creative Cloud family. Notably, there is no patch for Flash Player this month, but there is a flash for Adobe Acrobat and Reader, which is probably the most used software on the list. For Adobe Acrobat and Reader, we have a total of 75 different vulnerabilities that are being addressed. Now, many of these vulnerabilities are rated critical with the possibility of code execution. But well, Microsoft patches aren't the only Windows security news we have today. Tavis Ormandy from Google's Project Zero released a blog post looking at the CTF protocol, which is part of Windows text services. What this is all about is various input method editors that you have available in Windows to essentially enter more complex scripts like, for example, Chinese or Japanese. Japanese. But of course, there are many, many editors that can be used to enter characters into various uh, Windows software. And this CTF protocol is sort of the clue that keeps everything together. But the tricky part here is that this means that we have processes that run under different privileges exchanging information with each other and the messages being exchanged here are quite complex leaving room for misinterpretation and with that plenty of room for vulnerabilities. Tavis has created a tool in order to create these CTF messages and essentially experiment with it. And with the blog post, he made the tool available. The blog post also walks the reader through a particular vulnerability that he found in the CTF protocol. It is exploitable no matter what language, so no matter what input method is enabled, but Harris also points out that some of the more complex languages like Chinese, Japanese, Korean and the like, well, uh, there are more possibilities for this and actually more possible exploits. For example, an attacker would be able to inject data into a more privileged process. He has a little demo here with Notepad, where a Notepad is run as an administrator, and then a non-administrator process is able to send data to Notepad. And that part is actually just of the way CTF works. So that's technically not necessarily a bug. It's really more sort of a protocol weakness. 
So in short, this is something I think we'll hear more in the future and I really can't do it justice here within the five minutes I have available. If you are into sort of the more high-end uh, exploit development, then certainly take a look at CTF tool and see how all of this works and fits together. And uh, by the way, According to Tavis, he wasn't really able to figure out what CTF stands for. He guesses it's C text framework, but uh, well, I guess CTF will do for now. And well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.